Hey everybody, I'm Exotic Gaming. Hope you're all having a great day. So, Apex Legends Mobile Global Release has been out for a few days now, and by this point in time, a lot of people have started to realize that this game is super optimized for low-end devices. It's awesome. I, I wasn't expecting it to be this optimized because, I mean, the game literally looks like a PC game for your phone, but the fact of the matter is, it is very optimized. However, I do understand that despite this, not everybody's phones can run this game perfectly, and there still are a lot of people that do run into issues with lag when they're playing Apex Legends Mobile. And in this video, I'd like to give all of my best tips and tricks to fix lag and make Apex Legends Mobile run better. It's nice because I'm not a good player, I'm not gonna lie, but I do know how to fix lag, so buckle up. Brace yourselves, an Apex Legends mobile noob is about to give you tons of tips and tricks to fix lag and make your game run better, and the best thing is, is they're actually gonna work. Leave a like if this video does help you guys out, and subscribe for more Apex Legends mobile content, subscribe to see the journey of me going from noob to pro, and comment down below any other tips and tricks you have to fix lag in this game, because chances are I might have missed one or two different things, and everybody else that's watching this video can go down below in the comments and see even more tips. If you comment something good, I'll heart your comments and people can see what you have to say. Thanks guys! And with that being said, let's get this started. So here we are, and I first want to apologize for my very newbie Apex Legends mobile gameplay. I still am not very good, but I'm working on it, okay? The nice thing is, you don't have to be a pro to actually know how to fix lag. So what exactly do you need to do? I wrote an entire script for this video to make it sound as professional as possible. That's why my eyes are looking down a little bit while I'm talking to you guys here. The first things you should do are some of the most basic tips. They're the easiest ones and the ones that you should try first. The two key things that might be causing lag for you is either storage issues or memory issues. If your storage is completely full, it's gonna slow up your phone. So what you need to do is delete anything that you don't need that's filling up space. Large videos, pictures, apps that you don't use anymore, old text messages with people you don't talk to anymore, random downloads and files. All of this you can transfer to your computer or store on the cloud so you're not losing any of that data, but you don't need all of this massive stuff on your phone itself. A good rule of thumb is to have at least 20 to 25% of your storage free, and it should greatly reduce lag in your game. When it comes to memory, this is referring to RAM, random access memory for computers. If you don't have too much RAM on your phone, like you have two, three, maybe even four gigs of RAM and you're playing Apex Legends Mobile, you can run out of memory pretty quickly. So every time you want to play Apex Legends Mobile, swipe out of every other app on your phone so only Apex is open, and then restart your device to clear cache. When you literally turn your device off and on again, as cliche as it sounds, it's pretty much a little refresh for your device and your game will run a lot better. But hey, we should probably talk about some of the in-game settings, right? This portion of the video will be dedicated to all of the different settings that I would either turn on or off, and I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. One thing to note, if you really are having severe lag in the game, you might actually want to turn off some of these auto settings like auto open doors, auto open chest, auto loot, stuff like that. Anytime your device has things set to auto, then that means that's a little bit of data that your phone has to remember to just always do every single time you get near an item or an object or something like that. So that's something you could potentially turn off if you really need to. But honestly, you really need to go down to your graphics and audio settings and lower your graphics settings as low as you can go and keep your frame rate high. You can keep it to maybe very high or something like that, maybe ultra if you really want to, but honestly, you can get away with having low graphics quality, but you can't get away with having low frame rate. So basically, yes, you wanna have high frame rates, low graphics, not the other way around, okay? With the adaptive smoothing, if you actually turn that on, you're gonna get this notification that says if FPS is too unstable, the graphic quality of a match will be reduced automatically to improve graphic smoothness, which is good. You wanna have that turned on because it's automatically gonna lower graphics if you potentially get into a situation that ends up causing lag. Your FOV settings really don't matter too much. Some people can argue if you have a super high FOV, that means more things are on your screen and it could potentially impact your gameplay. So maybe don't put your 
FOV too high. For your graphic style, if you have it at realistic, that's gonna be something that's gonna cause a little bit more lag. My phone is a gaming phone, it can handle that. You can either put soft or classic, and that's gonna make your game run the best. So either classic or soft graphic style. Next up for your advanced settings, you can pretty much turn all of these things off if you really wanna have the best gameplay possible with the least amount of lag. These are the settings that I have for a gaming phone, but like dynamic shadows, refraction quality, bloom, vegetation, all of these things will be using up some of the memory on your phone when you're playing the game. So you can turn all of these off and it's really not gonna impact your gameplay. It's just gonna make the game not look as nice. When it comes to your camera settings and the graphics and audio, you have the ability screen shake effect. I would actually turn that off because if your screen is shaking, it's gonna be using up more memory than if it was just stable. So yeah, you should probably have that turned off if you want to make your game run at its absolute best. And then for the audio, really, it doesn't matter too much. Honestly, I would just keep everything the way it is. You can argue that sometimes when other people are talking, their microphones might cause a little bit of lag to you. So if you're playing in a squad with people and they really aren't contributing anything at all to your team, you could just turn off the squad mics and then that way it might make your game run a little bit better but chances are you're probably going to just do better anyways even with a little bit of lag if you can actually hear what your teammates are saying so it's an option but i probably would not do that first any of your sensitivity settings do not matter you can choose whatever sensitivity settings work best for you that does not impact your gameplay which is great because i don't know what the best sensitivity is for apex yet i use my own sensitivity and it's probably not the best thing gyroscope I do not use a gyroscope, but I do think if you turn gyroscope on, it might cause your device to lag a little bit more. So you might want to try playing Apex with gyroscope off. I understand if you play every game with gyroscope on, you probably want to have it on anyways because that's something you're more comfortable with. But see if you turn it off, if it impacts lag, and maybe you might want to turn that off. For your overall control settings, these do not matter at all, just like your sensitivity settings. Controller settings do not matter at all. I do have to say, Sometimes Bluetooth also impacts lag a little bit. If you have something connected via Bluetooth to your device, that might actually take up a little bit of memory usage. So if you're noticing a little bit of lag when you're using a controller, you might just wanna disconnect the controller and use the regular touchscreen buttons and see if it impacts your lag. Maybe it might lag a little bit less. And finally, at the end, when you go down to your dynamic download, well, you do have the option to turn some of these things off. You can delete any of the dynamic download that you end up downloading for Apex Mobile. It's just gonna take up more and more storage space on your phone. And if you do have that issue with storage and Apex Legends Mobile just takes up too much space on your phone, you can delete things like cosmetics. You can delete videos and other stuff like that because, you know, some of these things are 100, 200 megabytes, 300 megabytes. And, you know, that is going to make your game run better. But that's not it for the tips and tricks. No, because there's a lot more stuff that I got to tell you guys about. One thing that you might have not realized or maybe just overlooked is the fact that if your game starts to overheat your device, then that's actually gonna cause more lag. You can't have your device getting too hot. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can play while you're holding your phone in front of a fan, so you're blowing cool air toward the back of your phone. That actually cools it down a little bit. You can also put it into a refrigerator for just like a minute or two, just to cool it down a little bit. Don't put it into a freezer because that's too much of a temperature difference and that might cause some issues in your device. A refrigerator is gonna be perfectly fine if you put it in there just to cool your device down. And super important, you do not want to play Apex Legends Mobile while your phone is plugged in and charging. I don't know if you ever realized this, but if you are playing a game while your phone is charging, it ends up getting super hot and that's actually really bad. It might even damage the phone. So don't play the game while it's charging. If your phone is low on battery, just stick it on the charger, wait to play Apex. You can wait 30 minutes, you'll be okay, you won't die, just don't play the game while your phone is charging, okay? Now there are a lot of other external apps that you can download for both iOS and Android devices. All you need to do is just search up Game Booster on the App Store or the Google Play Store and you might end up finding some pretty cool apps that you can test out. 
Some of them work, some of them don't. You know, you can download them and see which ones do make your game run a little bit better. But the whole point of these apps is they end up clearing your device cache. Some of them have an antivirus, which, you know, you might actually have a virus on your phone and that might be causing some of the lag in the game. They can do things like clearing up your RAM and, you know, accessing your storage, letting you know which pictures are taking up the most amount of space and stuff like that. Again, this is not necessarily my first tip and the thing that you should try first, but it is an option if, you know, you've tried all the in-game settings and you still end up having lag. And here's another thing that you can do for Android devices. You can turn off something called animation scale in developer options. It's going to be a little bit different for every device, but what you need to do is go into your device settings and search build number. After you find it, you need to tap build number seven times and eventually you will unlock developer options. After you go into the developer options, scroll down until you see the drawing section and lower the window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale to either 0.5 times or completely off. When you turn these things down, it basically reduces the animations that your device has. So it'll open up apps faster and basically make things feel a little bit more instant. It doesn't work for everybody, but it is worth a shot. And you can always turn these animations back to one time if you like it better. And hey, speaking about memory, you know when I told you guys earlier to swipe out of every other app and only have Apex open? You might still have apps running in the background. And that's bad because that ends up diverting your device is rammed to a bunch of other things that you don't want on. You only want it to be focusing on Apex Mobile. So what you need to do is on Android, you can go to your app settings, find an app that doesn't matter too much to you, like a different game or even Facebook or Google, find battery settings for that app, and then make sure you turn off the ability for the apps to run in the background. For iOS devices, go to General Settings, Background App Refresh, and turn everything off that you don't want running in the background. Facebook, YouTube, Google, and a lot of other apps love doing background app processes, and it doesn't matter. So start with those ones first, and then you should notice your phone to start to speed up. If you want to go even crazier with this on Android, you can go to your developer options, scroll down to the apps section, and then limit the background app process limit to maybe one or two or something like that. Sometimes that might even work better than closing out of everything manually. If you remove the background processes to everything else and you only focus it on Apex, you're going to have all of your phone's power focused on Apex only and it's gonna run that much better. But hey, speaking of game boosting apps, I know I told you guys about the external ones earlier on. Some phones do end up having a built-in game boosting app. I have a $100 Motorola phone with like three gigs of RAM. It's not a very high-end phone, but even that phone has a built-in game app. So you might wanna actually open that up and explore around and see if there's any setting within that game app that says something like maybe boost your device performance or something along those lines. That might actually be the route that you want to take. And hey, this is a simple one, but some people completely overlook this. Maybe you want to wait a little bit as you go into match after match after match. If you jump into a battle royale match over and over and over in quick succession, the second you win, you immediately go into another one that might actually cause a little bit of lag. So wait a bit, maybe two, three, four minutes, something like that in between your matches and it actually will make your game run a little bit better. But hey, here's another thing that might be a little bit obvious as well, but some people might completely overlook it. Disconnect other devices on your Wi-Fi if you're noticing any lag. If you're playing on Wi-Fi and you have a lot of connection issues and the game lags a lot, it might not even be because of your device. So check and see how many different things are actually running on your Wi-Fi. Maybe like a Google Home that you never use anymore or someone else is doing updates on a smart TV. Your Wi-Fi router can only handle so much, so disconnect the things that aren't really that important so that way your Wi-Fi speed is focused more on Apex and you're gonna notice your device maybe lagging a little bit less if you end up doing that. And getting close to the end here, believe it or not, the most complex tip of this entire video is you can actually lower the resolution of your phone temporarily so it can run games better. If you think about it, the lower the resolution, the fewer pixels on your screen and the less your device has to render. I made an entire video a little while ago explaining exactly how to do this on an Android device with a PC. 
and I will link it down below in the description. It is for Call of Duty Mobile, but the same thing applies to Apex Mobile, all right? But basically, you will be using a few different programs to lower down your screen resolution temporarily. And the best thing is, it's really easy to revert it right back to the way your phone was originally, so it's not a permanent thing, it's only temporary. Some Samsung devices also have some sort of setting within their developer options, I think, where they can actually lower down their screen resolution just by, you know, using the phone itself. So you might want to check that out if you do have a Samsung device. I can't verify that because I don't have one myself, but hey, let me know down below in the comments if you actually have that, and that would actually be a valid tip. A couple other things, you should probably play the game with a reduced brightness on your phone. If your phone has full brightness and it has all that power focused on the screen, then it's going to actually probably overheat. You're going to have some more memory issues and you're going to have more lag. And then on top of that, bringing on the issues with memory, you should never play the game outside, especially if you live in a hot climate. Yeah, if you live in a cold climate, it's okay to probably play the game outside, but if you live in a tropical country like, I don't know, Singapore or the Philippines, or maybe like in the middle of the desert in Egypt or something like that, yeah, you probably should not play the game outside when it's 120 degrees outside because that sun blaring down on your device screen is gonna overheat it so quickly. And finally, to wrap all of these tips up, the last thing I would suggest is if all of the things that I mentioned earlier still does not fix your phone and you still have a ton of lag in Apex Legends Mobile, you might just want to play in game modes that would be less intensive on your device. I would recommend something like TDM. The maps are smaller, you're going to have less people, and it might end up running a little bit better than an entire massive battle royale map. You might still have lag issues, and then in that case, well, there's not too much else you can do, but TDM probably will run better than regular Battle Royale, and that might be your last resort effort. But hey, I really hope it doesn't come to that. I really hope all of the other things that I mentioned in the video do help you guys out. That's the whole point of this video. I hope at least something does. Please let me know down below in the comments if there is anything else that you do to fix lag in Apex Legends Mobile. Maybe I missed something, and I would love if you guys could give even more tips. But yeah, that's basically it for today's video. It was a bit of a longer one than I've done before, so I really hope you guys stayed until the end. Make sure to leave a like if it did help you guys out, and subscribe down below for more Apex Legends Mobile videos coming out very, very soon. Thank you so much, guys, and with that being said, I'll see you all in the next episode.